exactly are the FBI and the U.S. Attorney's Office looking into? Well, Jake, uh, just one more sign that the nursing home scandal continues to be a very serious issue for Governor Cuomo. Uh, what we know right now is that the FBI and the U.S. Attorney's Office in Brooklyn, they are scrutinizing how the Cuomo administration handle the data related to nursing homes deaths uh, in their state. What we understand is that it is a preliminary investigation, a preliminary look that they are giving this. Uh, we don't know if they are just looking at the governor, if they are looking at members of the administration. Uh, and and Cuomo's office has basically said we have always cooperated with the DOJ and we will continue to do so. Uh, one other fallout that is worth uh, mentioning as well here in New York, uh, legislators are moving forward as well uh, with trying to strip Cuomo of some of these uh, expanded emergency powers that he has enjoyed uh, throughout the pandemic. So a very clear signal that they're trying to send that Cuomo no longer enjoys uh, their confidence. And just one other, other thing that I will quickly note, uh, you remember he received an Emmy Award last year for these daily COVID press conferences that he held. A lot of people found them really reassuring at a moment when reassurance was exactly what they were looking for. Well, New York legislators are now saying uh, that the Academy should take that award back from the governor, that they don't think his uh, handling of the pandemic should be celebrated in that way. Cuomo's office is saying that uh, they're not really going to engage that issue and that they are busy and focused right now in trying to find the pandemic, fight the pandemic, Jake. All right, MJ Lee, thank you so much. Appreciate it. Coming up, a victim of unimaginable torture and abuse speaking to CNN to show the world what is actually going on inside a Chinese internment camp. That's next. In the world lead today, shocking allegations of gang rape are emerging from detention camps in China. The U.S. government is accusing China of the mass internment of up to two million members of the mostly Muslim ethnic minority group, the Uyghurs, and other groups in recent years. Part of a policy the U.S. State Department says amounts to genocide. Beijing, of course, denies this, claiming the camps are actually vocational training centers aimed at creating jobs and stamping out Islamist extremism. But human rights organizations, not to mention survivors of these camps say that the Chinese government is lying. A warning, the following report has language that may be disturbing for some viewers. CNN's Ivan Watson reports. The traumatized survivor of a nine-month nightmare. Tursunai Ziyawudun, a refugee from China's Xinjiang region, describes the torture and rape she says she endured during detention in a Chinese internment camp. How is your health today after your experience in the camps? I was in a lot of pain and suffered bleeding. After I arrived in the U.S., I had to undergo surgery and my uterus was removed. I've suffered a lot of damage. Tursunai is an ethnic Uyghur. In March 2018, she says police in Xinjiang detained her at a so-called vocational training center for women. Because I lived in Kazakhstan for five years, they wanted me to confess to say I was influenced by American propaganda and foreign organizations. During one interrogation, Tursunai says guards beat and kicked her till she blacked out. In the camp, Tursunai says authorities began forcibly implanting female detainees with contraceptive IUDs. After a botched procedure led to bleeding, she says she was taken into a room. There were three guards. They inserted a stun baton inside me and twisted and shocked me with it. I passed out. On a separate occasion, she says guards wearing masks once again took her from her cell. In the next room, I had another girl crying and screaming. I saw about five men going into that room. I thought they were torturing her. But then I was gang raped. After that, I realized what they also did to her. Tursun and I first revealed these claims in an interview with the BBC. The Chinese government did not answer our questions about the women named in this report, but Beijing did vehemently deny any human rights abuses in Xinjiang. There has never been such a thing as systematic sexual abuse and mistreatment against women. China is a country ruled by law. Why you are here? There's strict state censorship in Xinjiang, and police followed and harassed CNN journalists when they last visited. Tursunai claims she was held at a facility outside the city of Gulja. CNN has also obtained rare testimony from another woman who says she worked in a camp near the city of Urumqi. The women all had their hair shaved off. 
They wore gray uniforms with orange vests and printed numbers on them. For 28 years, Kelbin or Sadiq worked as an elementary school teacher. In 2017, she says she was ordered to teach Mandarin at an internment camp holding thousands of women. Speaking from relative safety in the Netherlands, Kelbinor says on her first day of work in the camp, she witnessed a disturbing sight. Two soldiers were carrying a Uyghur girl out on a stretcher. There was no spark of life on her face. Later, a female police officer told me the girl died on her way to the hospital due to heavy bleeding. Although Kelbinor did not know the cause of the woman's death, she says later that same female police officer told her male guards routinely gang-raped detainees at the camp. The officer also told her... When they drank at night, policemen told each other how they raped and tortured girls. In previous reporting on China's mass internment policy in Xinjiang, CNN heard testimony from Gulbahar Jalilova, a citizen of Kazakhstan, who alleges that she endured sexual assault from a guard during prolonged detention in Xinjiang. CNN cannot independently verify the accounts of these women. China has attacked their credibility, calling these women actors playing victims from Xinjiang. The Chinese government says... No women are abused in the camps. What do you say to the Chinese government? I am a 43-year-old woman. Do you think this is something I can be proud of sharing with the whole world? I would tell them that I'm not afraid of them anymore, because they already killed my soul. She hopes her brave decision to speak out will encourage others to do the same. But Jake, speaking out involves a terrible burden. All of the dozens of natives of Xinjiang that I've interviewed over the past couple of years, when they go public, they do so knowing that the Chinese authorities may punish their relatives who are still in Xinjiang. I mean, parents, siblings, spouses, including the women in this report. The Chinese government, of course, denies that they use relatives as hostages. Beijing continues to insist there are no human rights abuses whatsoever in Xinjiang. Jake. All right, Ivan, thanks so much. Horrible report. We'll be right back. This is Mars, ready to begin taking the stand. In our out-of-this-world lead today, something that has not happened in nine years, just in the last hour, NASA's most sophisticated rover yet successfully landed on the surface of Mars after a 300 million mile journey. And now we have the first photos taken by the rover as it embarks on its critical mission to find out if Mars has ever sustained life. The landing took incredibly complex choreography, 10 years of preparation, and NASA says landing on Mars is hardly easy. Only about 50 percent of all previous attempts succeeded. Before we go, we want to take a moment to remember just one of the more than 492,000 lives taken by coronavirus in this country. Mark Glenn or Cuyo was a sailor stationed in Virginia. He was just 42 years old. He served as an aviation equipment technician on the USS Wasp. Or Cuyo was originally from the Philippines. One of his commanders told CNN affiliate WVEC, quote, his commitment to this country was evident through his service as well as his decision to become a U.S. citizen by naturalization, unquote. The Navy says that Orcullo tested positive for COVID on January 17th. Tragically, he died last Friday. To his family and friends, our condolences. May his memory be a blessing. You can follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Jake Tapper. You can tweet the show at The Lead CNN. Our coverage on CNN continues right now.